dragons on, baby. Grass dragons on, baby. Dueling oh. dragons. Oh, dueling. Oh, oh, flip flop. Oh my goodness. Flippity flop it up. Flippity flip flip flop. As we know, the iguanas love color, and the black one I couldn't hardly see. Silver one is too shiny, and they don't like shiny stuff. But the red snare, let me tell you something. When and just get a little whiff of it. This is a, a natural oil that you would use in uh, iguanas. And they're getting super, super silly on that banana liquor. Bad, bad, bad. Go, go, oh. He's... All right, guys, we just got a report of some iguanas behind these trailers. None. It's almost like that's an exposed spot of the brain on the skull. And it's not so much of an eyeball that it can see stuff other than motion. And like a bird flies over him. Oh my God. Oh, he's eating, he's eating the pole. Gah. I see him, he's eating it. He's got a mouthful. Yeah, come over on him. Special shout outs to FX Air Gun and Pyramid Air. Oh my God. Hyper orange. Oh. Ooh. The finesse. The finesse. <laughs> My goodness. My goodness. Oh my gosh. Definitely. Six foot. out there those traps had flowers in them did you notice mm -hmm. I, I hang flowers in my traps upside down so what I've done here is I want you to pick these up one at a time you'll see this end has oil on it okay on the tip and you can see I've labeled them start with the Jaren and all and just get a little whiff of it this is uh, a natural oil that you would use in uh, a lot of those natural uh, pesticide sprays around the house that won't affect your pets and it's made from flowers hmm. mosquitoes hate this it kind of smells a little bit like citronella-ish, kind of. You got bit. it. You hit it. It hits on all those flavors. Now, bougainvillea. Try this one. We know what happens when iguanas find bougainvillea. They will just destroy this it. This is the, the scent from that? This is the essence of and the oil of. Smells to me like my grandmother just left that bathroom and I'm not going in there for a week. Too <laughs> soapy. Now, yeah. that came from London. I, I waited weeks and weeks for a bottle of bougainvillea oil. It's the only place in the planet anybody makes the oil of it and the essence of it. And typically these are oils that people will use to make silk or soaps and uh, lotions and maybe perfumes and things. Try the orchid. And this isn't just orchid, this is Hong Kong orchid tree oil. And you know how the Hong Kong orchid trees are something on their pathway as well. Okay? A lot of similar scents. Get down here to the hibiscus and you're really gonna go, oh, if I was an iguana, I'd have to eat that plant down to the bare bark. Dang. I want the flowers, I want the greenery, I want the stems. The hibiscus one, that's the one, smells right? Smells the most appetizing. There you go. Wow. So what I do with it is I hang a couple flowers upside down in my traps with an eyedropper, and I put a couple drops on my flowers in there. And there's your starter. That's enough oil to get you going for months and months and months with an eyedropper. A lot of bugs, insects hate this one. But bougainvillea and orchid and hibiscus, iguana is a door as we know. And hibiscus, I feel, is number one. I've used it on my traps for well over a year, and you might as well share that with everybody else that's out there slaying these dragons too, man. A bench, oh, Even the visual. Morning. Just like you and I see a stop sign at the end of the street, we know we gotta stop. An iguana sees a red strawberry at the end of the street, and he goes <laughs> <laughs> It's visuals. So the flowers up in the trap just attract them a little bit more than Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just wait a minute, to, what's yeah. that down there? I haven't eaten that. That's brand new blooms. I gotta go get that before another guana gets it. Yeah, yeah. And they run to it. This works. I've I've had great experience with it. I've even set four traps with nothing but fake flowers hanging in the top of them. I'm gonna share those uh, pictures of you on Facebook in this explanation, because basically that dock was like full of iguanas. You put like what, like four or five traps? All of them were hit. All of them were hit with um, fake flowers in it. I was there just were, sitting there shaking my head like, dang. There were nine traps and there were eight iguanas. No, nine traps and there were seven iguanas in those nine traps. Two of them had been sprung because they were between them. And as the others rattled them, they just closed. But on the dock, six foot behind them was the big orange alpha waiting for the pellet. Wait, he's he was waiting. guarding his troops that were all hanging out, and there wasn't even another alpha male in one of those traps, too. The Sicilian iguanas are out here in Florida. They're taking over docks. They're taking over houses. And today, we are with Jeff from Iguana Catchers, and we're going to be working a trailer park. So I'm super, super excited. That is awesome. Oh, speaking of the uh, decoys, 
The uh, I seen a neighbor. They put like a fake alligator by their pool, and they Works. said that it was working. Works. There's a couple different ones, and you, same thing. Pick it up, move it every day. Yeah. Put it over here. Put it by the steps. Put it where the raccoon or the iguanas keep coming. Set it there. It's a bigger lizard. Might eat me. So decoys can work, guys. If you guys are dealing with iguanas on your property as well, especially on docks or around bodies of water, I mean, it's like like Jeff was saying. This wolf that he's using right here, he sprays it with a pheromone that will actually scare off raccoons, wolves, foxes, bobcats, panthers, lions, and even iguanas. Well, it'll, it's, it's, a, it's coyote, first of all, and it'll, it can attract coyotes or other dogs, but it gets otters and iguanas and cats and other things, that ducks, etc., that you just kind of nuisance critters. You want them away. And then also, this big iguana right here... Um, <laughs> You can actually get a big iguana or a big alligator, and I've seen people put them by their pool to scare off iguanas. And I guess when you have little iguanas or even an alpha, he sees something like that. I mean, he's going to feel like un like outmatched, you know? Just this one's a little comical for the equation, but there are <laughs> ones available. Yeah. 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 There are, uh, there are uh, alligators available that you can put by your pool. Some of them come in sections with a little hook between them, so you th throw it in the pool and it floats and kind of wiggles and moves around. Ah. Uh step up to try to deter these iguanas or catch them and it seems like jeff right here has got some answers man so i'm super excited for today let's go hit some uh without any further ado guys let's uh get on the road and uh let's bag the iguanas so there's a big one out here somewhere huh well he said it's it went up over the wall he used the word wall as opposed to fence he said over the wall by the fence Okay. So I'm thinking, yeah, just right in here. I'm going to set these three. Uh, and he's probably right up here looking at us at the moment. Yep, he's probably up there. High in camouflage. Set him up for failure here. You can see we got a trap right there. We got some flowers hanging out of it. Bananas for the day. Yep, a couple some bananas. Just throw them. I like frozen strawberries. There you go. And we're going to set three traps, guys, because you guys know iguanas are super smart. And we don't know which way he's going to come down. He might come down here. He might come down on this tree. So the more traps you put out, the better chance you have of capturing an animal. And hopefully, it's a silly iguana. A little bit good visual for him straight up as he comes down. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is just a neighbor's house that we're just going to drop three traps. He just mentioned this about an hour ago. All right. And also, guys, we're going to be on Jeff's rig right here. Check it out. He's got this golf cart he's been working on. And it's perfectly equipped to go dragon hunting, dragon chasing. Ain't that right, Jeff? Yes, sir. The new dragon wagon. Even have a co-pilot up top side to oh, uh, look at this. help uh, point him out and figure out which way we're going. <laughs> he's, a, he's a little grooming male. He's kind of coming up in the, the food chain. He's got a little orange dewlap today. I have this bucket right here to put iguanas. And um, we've got a cooler and we got our catch poles. So let's, uh, let's go for a ride. Dragon slaying. Dragon slaying. They have a lot of good territory out there? Um, there's a, a huge tree in virtually everybody's backyard that there used to be one big orange one in each tree kind of defending his little territory and now there's like one every 10 trees because of oh, working yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, we've lost a little bit of our sunlight too. We'll see what happens. Far from hopefully a nest or a high room or maybe even another uh, rival alpha or iguana. You never know. So we will go out there. guy settle down it's okay man it'll be all right i promise it'll be all right here in a little bit maybe maybe not settle down take it easy we got a little girl there with a broken off tail regrow golly that's about a year and a half's worth of regrow there calm down a little bit you okay little oh boy little girl yeah i think it, i think it's looking like a female coming out here to warm herself up and get ready for the egg season you know Yep. Man, and she's spicy. Look at her. Got a little color here on top too. You sure this isn't a boy? Yeah, uh, let me let me let me double check, man. Whoa. Yeah, it do got uh orange spikes and an orange dewlap. And the dewlap's got the color too. Yeah. It's just that time of the year. Uh, you know what? And I gotta say there's something to be said in the lizard world, oh. in the iguana world perhaps, for a fat girl or full of grass. And yeah. the and the pores under the legs here aren't highly defined enough yeah. to call them crowns here or horns 
and then the orange color, which is more typical of a male. Exactly. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, it's crazy what we got going on down here in Florida, man. It doesn't make any sense. Well, Jeff did uh, add some interesting points. With the coloration and the pattern and the, the ferocity of this iguana, we're not quite sure if it's male or female. So if you guys have an idea, drop some comments and let us know. Not sure, but silly iguana. Silly iguana. In the bag. In the bag. Iguana tacos, anybody? Tacos! Taco Tuesday! Decoy. Decoy. He's got one. That's oh. great for the ducks, especially if you pick it up and move it every day or two. That's the decoy right there, huh? Big kitty. Big kitty. You see the two heads sticking up? Yeah. Just between them. Let's try to go at them right here. You want okay. To? On this little concrete. Go down and uh, see if you have luck on these guys. All right, let me go give it a shot. So sleepy. For the bag. Silly iguana. So sleepy. Yeah. They're, they're, these iguanas, guys, they're like tired or something. Or they're just being silly. They're just sleeping in this grass. Remember I told you about the white flowers? Look at the white flowers that were supposed to be there and they're not there no more. It's because of these guys. <laughs> oh. I've got extra snares, obviously, because I'm going to break them, I'm going to bend them, and I'm just going to pitch them and throw them away. And then down here under this little piece of foam is what you were just mentioning. I have tiny snares for tiny iguanas. I have more paper clips, extra swivels. But if you see these little guys here, this is for catching what we were just dealing yeah. with. It's a little bit easier. Yeah, exactly. Now, it's a little harder to get around their neck because you're dancing and dangling a tiny piece. But seriously, guys, I catch hatchlings with these little six, seven inch ones with this pole. Yeah. And I'm going, oh, I got a hatchling with my snare pole. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. And then I'll go out and Put one of these back on, catch one at six foot three. You just carry this kit with you in your pocket. You can like interchange with them as you go on throughout your day. Yep. Oh, Keep wow. it right here at all times. It's a must. Ready to rock and roll, man. A couple other spots to go check out, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. And we're still looking for that big alpha. So let's keep our eyes peeled. He can be anywhere. No, what's up? Catch local and eat local. You know, and that right? another Whoa. problem with these iguanas. What? I mean, right here, look what we found. That's exactly where all three of these guys were. That's exactly where all three of these iguanas were. Now we talk about oh. they're eating flowers and they're digging up things and making burrows and, and making you know sidewalks and foundations and seawalls collapse. I see why they're down here drinking. Banana right liquor too. They're Come on, guys. one of their favorite fla that's, flavors. That's, that makes total sense. One of their favorite flavors. Let's get with the program, guys. We put these iguanas are out here. Silly iguanas. And they're getting super, super silly on that banana liquor. Bad, bad, bad. Go, go, oh. and I've crimped my own fittings. You put the swivel on first, and then there's even a little bit of double stick tape here at the top to keep it open while I'm dangling it until I get around that Charizard's head. That's for, that's for and a big, is, big Charizard. When you see one, I go, oh man, I can't get that around his dewlap. That's not gonna go around his dewlap. No. I can get around his head, maybe, but if you don't get around their dewlap, you're not taking him. Nope. He's gonna wiggle it off every time. Oh yeah. You Gotta get behind it. that. They got a lot of power in that dewlap to whip it open. And... Happened to me the other day, man. Mm -hmm. Remember, Larry? Nah, so that's cool, man. I'm learning something new. You guys, you guys learn something new every time you guys come out. And a special thanks to our friend Jeff uh, for showing us some of these uh, these secrets, man, about bringing more snares, about using some bait. Man, I gotta and say, 99% uh, of what I, I'm showing you, I was taught yeah. by some, some, some good the, trappers. The guy, Brian Wood, iguana catchers. Yeah. All American gator, exotic leather fashion. The Those one and only account. legend, the legendary Brian, Brian Wood. Brian Wood. It's been all over the news, all over. Everything I'm showing you is what I learned from him. Uh, a year and a half ago, he took me out, ran me on his route, and handed me his business. And I've been running it for him for well over a year and a half now. Uh, I'm his iguana catcher for iguana catchers. He takes the calls, he sends me the leads, I go handle the deals. You go, ha you go handle I go get it done. Thank Brian Wood Thank for blazing this trail for all of us. For sure. I'm goose bumping right now because I was just honored this guy taught me one thing, let alone all the stuff he's taught me. It's not all mine. Yeah. Uh, this is his business, and I just help him keep it going because, honest to gosh, uh, all American Gator, if you go anywhere and you get gator bites or gator this or gator that, it came out of his wax box that he, uh, he processed. Uh, if uh, you go somewhere and it doesn't say Gucci on it and you paid $4,500 for it, that $450 wallet came from Brian at, at uh, Exotic Leather Fashions. And it's cool stuff too. 
I mean, even the pockets on the insides are gator. Dang. It's not the, the leather like you'd have on the inside. Wow. It's all gator. That'll wow. last my lifetime, my son's lifetime, and probably my grandson's lifetime before it actually wears out. A lot of respects to the legends, the OGs. I acknowledge that. I know Brian Wood, when I first started, I, he was the first person I was reading articles all over Sun Sentinel, mm -hmm. uh, the Miami Herald. Um, he was on the news, Channel 7 News, several times. You know? So much time in the day. Yeah. Are these guys still here? <laughs> oh, yo, yo, yo. We got one right there by the bank. All right, get him. There's one sleeping on the dock right there, too. Let me see if I can. I'll go after the one on the dock. You All get right, this guy. Silly, silly. Yep. Yep. We've got a torso snare. Yep. Got him around. Oh, it's around his neck now. Nice. Come here, little guy. Don't break my pole. Hey, calm down. Hey, calm down. Oh, Settle down. You think it was your last day? A lot of females. Oh my. Okay, let's go put these in the truck. <laughs> yeah. We'll even come back for the poles here in a second. Yeah, there's a big. Uh, yeah, he's bobbing. Let's oh, get. Bobbing. Let's come up here, guys. Nah, he doesn't like us at all, Jeff. Yeah, yeah let's, let's get, get right. out of here. Yeah, he doesn't like us. This is funny. This is my old dragon wagon. Oh, did he just just hit the water? Did he just dive bomb in the water? Yep. Oh my goodness. All right, we got two. We're gonna try to work right here. Nope. Flip him away. Oh shoot. Uh oh. Look at that one. Man. Now we got one. Woo! Fish on. Whoop. Shoot. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Green tree dragon on, baby. Dueling dragons oh, fighting their way like superheroes. <laughs> 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 I don't know what they just said to you. <laughs> like, nah, like baby Godzillas though, right? Yeah, right. You know what's wild, man? I seen I seen the movie Godzilla and a couple of them, and, and I, I seen a lot of comments. People are saying that they actually grafted Godzilla's actual skull and head and face from iguanas. Yeah. So these are like baby Godzillas out here. <laughs> and you've been doing this for a while. Like, what are some of like the more most complaints that you get from people dealing with iguana problems? Pooping by the pool. Pooping by the pool, right? Listen. If you're gonna poop by the pool, you gotta to pay to poop by the pool, you gotta be the guy that cleans the poop up from the pool. You might be a tenant that comes down and pays to poop in the pool and then leave and go back to where you came from. You can poop in your own pool when you come home, when you get home. But these guys simply are not allowed to poop Pooping. in the pool. Can't not do allowed. it. Bad, bad, bad iguana. Silly, silly. No pooping in the pool. All right, guys, we just got a report of some iguanas behind these trailers. We're gonna go back there and see if we can grab them. Oh my gosh. Oh. He just belly dove in the water. Look around the corner. He, he went in? Oh, there you go. Two oh, of them down there. Dude, yeah, we got another. We got a. Uh, let's go around. Okay. Go right back where you came through that between here. Okay. Yeah, stay right there. Stay right there. Larry. Don't advance on him anymore. And you and I can come out on him. And he may catch us catching both them. That would be sweet. That'd be sweet. Ready? Three, two, one. Up. Dragons on, baby. Dueling oh. dragons. Oh, dueling. Oh, oh, flip flop. Oh my goodness. Flippity flop it up. Flippity flip flip flop. Dude. Flippity flippity flop flop flop. flop. Hey, buddy, settle down. It'll be okay. I promise. Oh my. Oh, you got him around the thigh there. Be careful. That one will be wild. That one's gonna be wild. All right. That one will bite you because you're around the pelvis. Right. Let me try to grab him right here. Yep. So he doesn't get me. Around the neck, they're much more uh, subdued. What's up, dude? You subdued? You subdued, dude? Ooh. What's up, dude? Ooh, he's Ooh. spicy. 
Spicy, spicy. Meow, oh, kitty, kitty, down, kitty. Boy. Little boy! Yes! That's what we've been looking for right now. A nice dominant male. Double up and put these two silly iguanas. Speaking of sweet, right here. What? What? Bougainvillea bacon. Bougainvillea bacon? Yeah, right here, the jaw. Good, that's good, muscle. Good eat? Yeah, I, that's my, my favorite part. Enough for a bite, you know what I mean? On each side. I'm gonna get bit here doing this. <laughs> Man. Breed, that's a male. You think this one has eggs, Jeff, or what? Uh, a little underdeveloped for this time of the year. What is this uh, mid-December? Another month. It's gonna be obvious. Super They'll obvious. be much plumper. Right now they're full of grass. Um, I harvested some eggs last week and they were about the size of my pinky and still just little orange pebbles. Okay. And I went, those are way too underdeveloped. It needs another month of eating food. Uh, but it has started. The mating season has started. These guys are fertilizing the girls. Those eggs are growing. The more grass and everything they eat every day, the closer they come to next month where they're gonna start digging burrows. Breeding season's here, just like Jeff said. And the more these guys are out sunning and eating, the closer they're gonna come to digging holes and laying eggs. Rose, they That's dig. the damage, right? They don't think when they're going 30 foot down and putting a, a pea trap in it so they don't get wet when it rains or drowned, they don't think of the damage they're doing. They're just making a burrow for their eggs. It's, it's a lot of devastation. It can be very expensive. I seen an article that, I believe it was Palm Beach County or somebody, recently spent like 600,000 on repairing a single canal bank. So it could get pretty expensive as well. Ooh, hot, hot doggy, hot dog. There goes that other baby alpha. Two more to the left. There's two. There's two more young alphas right there. This is insane. Oh, dude. we get around the corner. This is where the big ones use. There's another one on the bank over there. It's a really good size. That but even these small guys got a lot of color right now because of mating season. Is this color any other time of the year? But right now. It's like, man, I might as well get in on this. Look at all them girls. <laughs> exactly. The big guy over in the trailer is getting them all, man. Then he'll come over and whoop your, you know what. Do got some more room to hold some more, so. Yeah. There are a couple other competing iguanas right there with those ducks. We're gonna set a record for the most live held dinosaurs. Oh my goodness, silly iguana. And you see his first instinct is he wants to he wants to go in that water. Man. And the other one is like is settle just down, sit, little guy. The other one just sits there. He doesn't it's like settle he down. Care. Yeah, It'll be so, all right. I promise. Well, I was lying. Man. So what they're up here doing is the uh, dandelions, and the white Florida snow is what they're up here after. That's that's what we were saying, man. We. We've seen iguanas eating these white flowers. We didn't yeah. know what they were at. Oh, uh, there's, there's sweet in it. There's like a tenth of a drop of sugar in each one of those. You know what I mean? It's, it's very sweet. Uh, be, bees, everything comes to it and makes pollen from it. The dandelions, uh, listen, man, I've come upon a six foot three alpha laying in a patch of dandelions, been sleeping for four hours. And the homeowner said he was eating dandelions all morning. He's been laying there all afternoon. I walk up on him and snare him and he don't fight because he's drunk. Interesting. Dandelion wine, <laughs> when it ferments in your stomach for a couple of hours laying out in the sun and you're a cold-blooded creature, it's a little different than if you and I ate dandelions. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. We would process a lot quicker. It's sitting in his stomach fermenting and with all the just, other full All of a sudden, he's just drunk laying there in the afternoon sun. He's basking in the sun, his head's spinning. You walk right up and snare him and they just kind of bob their head once and go, dude, put me in the truck. <laughs> Stop bad, em. bad iguanas. If you look over here, we got some, uh, a little bit of a uh, mess over there from the uh -huh. They probably done destroyed this dock. Over on the other side, there's Clyde. Look at that hole underneath that fence right there. That's from iguanas probably. Going underneath their nesting maybe. Who'd you think oh of? yeah. Yeah, right? Why wouldn't they? Uh -huh. They find a hole, they just go in it. They don't ask no questions. Big happy spot there. Silly iguanas. The iguanas love color. And the black one I couldn't hardly see. Silver one is too shiny and they don't like shiny stuff. But the red snare, let me tell you something. Ooh. When I get it up to their neck, they're going like this. They'll actually lift their head up and go, it's red, should I eat it? Really? And if you notice the color of the tape on the end of my pole, is red. specifically red for that reason. I want them to look at the tip of the pole and don't look at the guy walking at me. 
Look at that little cherry dangling above my head. I used to put a, uh, a fake uh, flower on the end of my pole. Oh, yeah? And it was working a little bit, sometimes, sometimes not. But then I came across the red snares and just a little bit of red tape on the end. And I went, that's just enough to distract them from me walking up on them. They see the red. And I can actually see the red through the green background better than better. some of yeah, the other yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. A green yeah, snare contrast. is impossible to see in the grass when the sun's against you or something. Oh, right here. Okay. I'm going to laying in the grass. I'm going to try to use Jeff's setup real quick, guys. And we got to go back and find yours. Got the red snare right in front of him. I'm about to put him in the back. Come here, buddy. Oh. Got the hook up. Oh. Now we're on. Now the fight begins. Paper like clip. Paper clip failed just perfectly. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Just lay the pole down and fight him. Woo! Fat bottom girl. Ooh, that Ooh. snare's coming yep, off that yep, neck. Yep, yep, yep. Perfect timing. Her. About to lose that one. Nice, nice. job, man. Thanks, man. That's sweet, dude. <laughs> wow, look. Another oh, fat yeah. girl busted with grass in your mouth. Oh, yeah. Caught that silly iguana red-handed. Oh, thanks, man. That was actually pretty cool, dude. Oh, yeah, he just looked right into it. That silly iguana. He just looked right into that red snare, thinking it was a strawberry. Oh, man, I see yeah, what you're talking Yeah, you saw him about. lift his head and look at the, the tip. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's how I get them to lift their head up. Sometimes they'll duck their head down. You can't get a snare in that because they're down in the grass. You know how they'll hunker down? You get them to lift their head just a second. Oh, now I got it around you. Oh, I got a body snare too. This guy's going to be violent. Yeah, he'll turn on me and get no. me. Yep, yep, yep. Just, yep, there, yeah, yep. Man. That's a dangerous capture right there because he didn't lose his energy. Hurt. And oh, wow. uh, right there on the back side of my hand, it's healed up. It's a year old, but that was all the way down to my wrist, filleted open, a huge piece of flesh. Right huge there. piece of flesh tore loose took months for that to heal uh, yeah. that was a year and a half ago a female about this size about three and a half foot i guess uh, i had it snared like that uh, wasn't standing on the snare tight enough and as i taped up the back legs it was cool when i went for the front legs she turned her head right around on me oh man and grabbed a hold of me because the snare was not around her neck it was around her body yeah and she was able to you know just turn just, her head yeah, flip around her. and just boom boy she got me and i mean that was it it was it was a bad day <laughs> And it's part of the gig. Got really close to that one. Like, what would be uh, good advice? Try to get close to them. So number one, I never wear my shades when I'm actually working them. Because those are my eyes, and now they're bigger. Never oh, look oh. at them. You look at them, they're looking at you. They, they're looking at you looking back at them. You know what I mean? They know you're paying attention to them. And I never walk straight at them. I cut them off at a 45 degree angle and I'm looking the other direction. I can see them out of the peripheral vision in the corner of my eye. And I'm slowly cutting off the distance between them. But I'm not looking right at them and I'm not coming at them and lower the boom down. You got to be super sneaky because these guys are sneaky. You got to be sneakier than yeah. them to try to sneak up on them and hit them with that sneak attack basically. Well, what, what would the age be on that guy? What would be your opinion? I would say, I don't know, maybe three. I'm not sure. I'd say three or four. I'm so some people go by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and would call him nine years old. Really? Some people do. I would call him eight. Yeah. Somewhere around in there, seven or eight. Okay. Um, I, you know, I. It's, I, it's hard. I, it really is. Yeah, I get I, it. I couldn't judge I any of my ex wives that close either. They were all younger than I thought. But. <laughs> <laughs> I get asked that question a lot, and it's, it's really a hard answer to. Because we just don't, I just don't have yeah. that data to be like, okay, this is for sure. But I would assume he's three, but at the same time, I mean, he's really big. He could be seven or eight, you know, and he is alpha too. So, and what is the, the life expectancy of an iguana in the wild? And I mean, 25? YouTube, I mean, Wikipedia we gotta says find that something out. weird. And it, I don't think it applies to Florida iguanas. Uh, down here, they don't have the natural predators. They don't have the stress. These are couch potato iguanas because they eat bougainvillea, hibiscus, and grass all day long. And a duck scares them, and they go over in the bushes in the tree or jump in the water and go to the other side of the lake do the same thing. Their stress level is this. So these are fat couch potato iguanas in Florida. I think they're bigger and fatter, and they live longer here because of that. I know there's some iguana experts out there. If you guys have any information on the life cycle and lifespan of iguanas, 
in Florida or in captivity, drop some comments. Let me yeah. and Jeff know. Help us know. We don't know all this. Yep, we're Learn just the trappers. New every single day. We're just the trappers. Let us know. He's on the. He's, he's camouflaging right on the thing. Go get him. All right. Let me see if I can get him. Oh, I see him laying down now. Yep. Silly iguana. Tricks are for kids. Oh, we got him. <laughs> Yeehaw. Eight second rodeo ride, buddy. Yep. Whoa. Whoa, 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 shoot, whoa. Wash your dirty. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got a situation here. He just dove in. Oh, he's in the reeds now. Oh, my. Oh, there he is. Scratched or. or yeah, because I think you got another mid-body snare here. You oh, yeah. Have... Try to grab his head. Yep. Yeah, there right, we go. got a big boy. Yeah. Good eye, man. I didn't see him. Man, I, I barely saw him either. I think the cameraman spotted him out. Shout out to the cameraman, Larry. Nice job, Larry. Boom. Just like that. Nice. We just had to dethrone him off this platform. Put this silly iguana in the bag. In the bag. Ladies and gents, we're back. And check out this Godzilla in the field. Just gonna try a tactic. We're gonna go along the fence and pretend like we don't. Three see more it. down past. Oh, he's got him. He's got him. There he goes. Settle down. Settle down. This might be the biggest one of the day. Man. That's a tiger. You've been a silly boy. Ooh, I don't think I got him around the dewlap, do I? It's not a big boy. That might be the one that was in this tree the other day. I certainly thought it was bigger than this, but. Could have been puffed up, you know? Yeah, yeah, the color, the time of the day, the sunlight, they're a little bit more colorful. Still really big, man. Mm -hmm. Dang. You wish you had a ping pong paddle? Oh yeah, <laughs> he's got one, man. So one of my favorite things about him right here, not favorite, is the, uh, I, this is like the metal studs on your teenager's motorcycle jacket. On a real, real, real big one, I've seen a 22 caliber pellet literally explode into glitter when it hits here. You hit one of those on a real big alpha and those are hard as rocks. Like deflected the pellet. Yeah. You think this is for uh, protection, like armor against other yeah. Cats, this is how cats go at everything. Mountain lions, bobcats, everything comes in like this to the back of the neck or under sometimes, but primarily here. Uh, that raccoon video we've all seen, the one raccoon taking the uh, mm -hmm. iguana by the pool, he finally was able to pierce this and bust the uh, second vertebrae and, oh. and break it. If you noticed in that video, at a certain point, the iguana just kind of laid flat. He was trying to drag him to the pool. Yeah. And then he stopped and the raccoon ran off with him because he, he finally pierced this. It's real thick hide right there. And then those nubs. Yeah, you can see the nubs right there. Check that out. That is essentially his armor protecting yeah. his, his, his vertebrae right there. So that, that's crazy, man. I, I, I remember seeing these things, but it's the first time I've seen them up close in person in a while. Tell us a little bit about the third eye. A lot of people are asking about that. So I believe, if I pronounce this correct, it's called a peridial eye. What that means is it's a single, it sits on the top of your head, and the nerve between that little dot and the brain is virtually none. It's almost like that's an exposed spot of the brain on the skull. And it's not so much of an eyeball that it can see stuff other than motion. And like a bird flies over them. Um, if, if they're looking the other way and they lift their head up and you move, they can sense that. It's not an eye that they can see you with. It's just more of a, a motion sensor, a light sensor. It picks up the shadows oh, uh, wow. called a peridial eye. I mean, their, their hearing is super sensitive, my guys. I mean, your eardrum is on the outside of their body. Crazy teeth. Those are some... And the teeth, yeah. Serrated steak Whoa. knife. Oh, my God. 
He's eating, he's eating the pole. Gah. I see him, he's eating it. He's got a mouthful. Chewing on my rope. Here, keep him there for a second. Let me T.O. Let me see if I could. Keep him there, I got him, I got him. Keep him there. Dude, that thing is super alpha, dude. Yeah, he just went up. Here, I got him, I got him, I got him. Stay there, big boy. Just stay there for one second. I got a couple of questions for your silly self. And it's right on his spike. Got him. Oh shoot, yeah, we got him. Flip got him down. Him. Gosh. Oh, shit. oh, I got whipped. I just wanna see how alpha he is. Oh shit. Yeah, he is. He's mad dragon. Let, go. let me see if I can grab him. Let go of my shoe, buddy. Excellent job. Excellent job. He's Thank you. I think he's an MJ fan. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Yeah, the, those, uh, the Bougainvillea bacon I was talking about on the side, that's the jaw muscle. And that's the, the, the clamp down force power. That's all from what's on the side of his mouth there. So these jaws generate yep, a lot of that's power. That's the muscle. That's what he uses to crunch and chew through a bougainvillea that has thorns. Dude, think about what they're eating. Thor uh, thorns, yeah. Bougainvillea's got thorns in it, man. Crazy thorns. And they just, just crunch all that stuff. Like cereal. It doesn't mean a thing to him. Silly iguanas. <laughs> Silly iguana thought he was going to escape. Not today, man. Not today. Oh, like they're kind of purplish too when they get cold. See how they're like red kind of purple? Really insane. There's more, there's still more in here, man. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. Man, and if I walk this guy off, I'm gonna call him four, six, four, five, somewhere in there. You guys know, like I said, the rules are we gotta put them to sleep once we catch them. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with the FX Impact M3. Special thanks to our friend Jeff uh, at Iguana Catchers. Thanks for joining me, guys. Gotta love what you do. This is a dirty job. Uh, it's not always a pretty one. You're gonna get bit, you're gonna get scratched, you're gonna get whipped. Uh, if you don't like it, find something else to do. <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. Yeah, man. Um, it doesn't happen all the time. It happens rarely, but it will, and it'll surprise you when it does. Uh, these are wild animals, and uh, they're not pets. If, if, you know, Jeff has removed almost, we have 15, where were you at before? 452 for this community. 452, and now we're at, we Four, have 15. 467. 467 iguanas removed from this community. All thanks to our friend Jeff at Iguana Catchers. And Iguana Man. Like I said, guys, 15 iguanas removed on today's job. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, like, comment, and hit the red subscribe button. Peace. Peace.